William Sangster was a pastor from England who lived during the time of the tragic Titanic's sinking. And uh, in one of his sermons, he repeated a really interesting story about uh, a woman who was on that boat. And the story illustrates the, uh, the importance of priorities. Uh, a, a woman, she had already taken her, her place on one of the lifeboats that was about to be dropped into the raging Atlantic Ocean. But suddenly, uh, she, she, she realized that, you know, in light of the fact that death was sort of breathing down the back of her neck, uh, she needed something in her room that she had forgotten. And so she asked if she could be excused and run back to her room very quickly uh, to get this item. And so she was, she was granted permission, uh, but with the warning that if she wasn't back in time, they would drop in without her and she would, she would die. And so quickly, she got out of the boat, she ran across the deck, and, uh, which was already sort of tilting at a dangerous angle. And she ran through the gambling room that had, uh, it was littered with money, with bills everywhere, but she ignored all of them, uh, pressing on to her room. She got to her room and she ran inside uh, to this, the shelf above her bed that housed her jewelry box with her precious, valuable diamonds. And she, she threw it across the, the, the room, it, it crashed on the floor, and behind that box was sitting three oranges. And she grabbed them, she ran back to the lifeboat, she climbed in the boat, and they dropped into the ocean. And this is what William Sangster said. He said, death had boarded the Titanic. One blast of its awful breath had transformed all values instantaneously. Uh, he said something like, priceless things were, now became worthless, and worthless things now became priceless in that moment of life or death. In that moment, she preferred oranges over diamonds. And, he, and here's where I'm going is if you're listening to this, the most loving thing I can tell you is that one day death will be breathing down your neck. And when that day comes, if you don't value oranges over diamonds, if you don't value the right things, it could cost you not just your life, but your eternity. So many people are chasing the diamonds. So many people are chasing the money. But to save your life according to God's word, to save your eternity, you have to value oranges over diamonds and there's a lot of sub points under what what oranges are uh, but the oranges that I'm talking about you know metaphorically is I'm talking about treasuring and valuing Jesus above anything this world has to offer you why because you see your sinfulness and rebellion against the holy and righteous God as a really really big problem I'm talking about seeing your need for Jesus who most people deem as an irrelevant carpenter but because you see your sin as a really big problem, you see Jesus as a really big savior. And so the only way that's gonna happen, the only way that you're gonna accept Christ as your savior is through what the Bible calls repentance, turning away from your sin and to Jesus Christ. And the only way you're gonna repent is by being humble, and the only way you're gonna be humble is by the spirit of God working in your life. And so let me just kind of remind you a little bit of, about this orange called repentance that will prove infinitely more valuable than anything this world has to offer you. You know, Martin Luther, he uh, nailed those 95 theses to the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany. And uh, the first of the, uh, the thesis re reads this. It says, Our Lord and Master Jesus Christ, it's something like this, I'm paraphrasing, willed that the entire life of believers is to be one of repentance. Uh, there's a really interesting account in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, where some people come to Jesus and they say, Hey, Jesus, did you hear about all those worshipers who, uh, they, they, they went to go worship in the temple and then Herod had them killed and their blood mingled with the sacrifices of, uh, that they were offering? Or how about those people uh, in Siloam where the tower just fell on them and, and killed them senselessly? Uh, why did they die, Jesus? This is the age-old question of why do, you, why do bad things happen to quote-unquote good people? And Jesus answers uh, really interestingly. He says this. He says, do you think they suffered in this way uh, because they were worse sinners than you? And then he says, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So Jesus is teaching in Luke 13 verses 1 to 4 five there is, is essentially saying this, when the worst tragedies of life happen, when titanics happen in your life, when, when senseless evil seems to happen, do you realize that, that you deserve the very same things? 
that people don't perish because they're worse sinners than you. You're actually just as bad as them, and that is a small picture of what you actually deserve. That's what Jesus is saying here in Luke 13, verses 1 to 5. On the flip side, if you go to Romans uh, chapter 2, it says this. It says, Do you not know, do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? So, so, so the, the, when God is kind and patient, that's intended to lead, lead you to repentance. And when tragedy happens in your life, that is to lead you to repentance. And so here's Martin Luther's teaching. All of life for the believer is one of repentance. And so that's my challenge for you today on this edition of Midweek Morning Encouragement is are you valuing the orange of repentance above and beyond the riches of this world, the diamonds this world has to offer you? Uh, so for the rest of this week, let's be people that walk in repentance. Let's be quick repenters. Let's realize that we have wrong motives, that we have selfish motives, that we are prone to choosing diamonds for our own. Uh, sake and and oftentimes at the expense of other people so let's be people that walk in repentance let's turn away from our sin and follow christ the rest of this week the rest of this month the rest of this year and uh, it's been so great to have you my name is anthony again i'm keystone bible church uh pastor wesley chapel and uh we look forward to seeing you right here next week on midweek morning encouragement we'll see you then